Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this second part of the video, we're going to look at sums of arithmetic sequences. So if you remember from the previous video, we left off with the last objective. We're going to use a formula for the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence and see how we can have applications involving the sum of terms. So we left off at the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. So the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence is going to be denoted capital S sub n. And this is called a nth partial sum. So capital S for sum, and the subscript denotes that there are n terms that have been added together to get the sum. This partial sum can be found by adding up the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So in other words, capital S sub n is the sum of the first n terms in an arithmetic sequence, the a sub 1, a sub 2, through a sub n. And remember, an arithmetic sequence is where you have a common difference, where the previous term is added by a common difference, d, to get the next term. So it turns out that the sum of the nth partial sum of an arithmetic sequence has a simple formula that you can calculate. So the idea is as follows. We're going to write the terms in an arithmetic sequence. a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, and then dot 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 all the way to the last term, which is a sub n. But now, right below it, we're going to write the same sequence, but in reverse order. a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, n minus 3, a sub n minus 4, and so on. And you'll get down to the very first term, a sub 1. Now add these two sequences together. One is going forwards, and the other one is going backwards. It turns out that this a sub n can be rewritten as a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So if you take a sub 1 and you add in a sub n, you will get a sub 1 plus a sub n for these first addition. Now a sub n minus 1, it turns out is equal to the first term plus, keep in mind that we found out from the last video that the number of common differences is always one less than the subscript. So you have n minus 2 times d. So if you take a sub 2 and you add in a sub 1 plus n minus 2 times d, then you'll get another a1 plus a n. Because a sub 2 itself is a sub 1 plus d. And then you'll have one more d to add in the n minus 2d. So you have n minus 1d's. So that is a sub n. So, so far, the first two columns gives us a sub 1 plus a sub n and the same thing. It turns out that every single one of these vertical additions will give us the same value. a sub 1 plus a sub n indefinitely, all the way to the last term. a sub 1 plus a sub n is again. And if you add these together, each of these sums, you'll have n copies or n of these a sub 1 plus a sub n's. So these are called n copies. And now it turns out that there's a formula for adding a sub 1 plus a sub n n times, but you actually had two of the same sequence. And this gives us a formula for the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. The sum s sub n of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence is given by the formula a sub 1 plus a sub n, that's what we found out in the last page, times n copies of a sub 1 plus a sub n. But since we had two rows of the same sequence, you have to divide by 2 because we had two too many a sub 1 is the first term and a sub n is the nth term. So you need to know the first term and the nth term in an arithmetic sequence and how many terms there are and you can figure out the sum using this formula. So let's see how we can use it. Example 5, finding the sum of the n terms of an arithmetic sequence 
find the sum of the first 100 terms in each of the following arithmetic sequences. So number one, we're going to look at this arithmetic sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it goes up to 100 for the first 100 terms. So keep in mind, this is an arithmetic sequence because the common difference is one. So you have to add one from the previous term to get to the next term for every single term. So this is an arithmetic sequence. And now we want to add all 100 of these numbers. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus ellipsis all the way to 100. That is denoted by capital S sub 100. It's the 100th partial sum. Well, let's see how you can do this using the method we just talked about. And it turns out this is called Gauss's method. This is named after Carl Frederick Gauss, who actually, the story goes that he did this when he was seven years old. So the teacher said to Gauss, what is one plus two plus three plus four plus five all the way up to 100? And that was the punishment. Well, Gauss knew the answer. The answer turns out to be 5,050. So here's how he did it. He wrote 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way up to 100. Then, in his mind, he wrote the same numbers, but in reverse order, just like we did on the last page. All the way down to 1. Well, same idea as what he did we added straight down for these terms that we're adding up in arithmetic sequence. So we have 101 plus 101, another 101 plus another 101, and you get to the very last column and you'll have 100 plus 1 gives you 101. So how many 101s are there? Well, there were 100 terms that we were adding together. So there's 100 copies. So S sub 100 would be 101, 100 times. But keep in mind, we added the sequence twice. So you have to divide by 2. And this 101 times 100 divided by 2 is the correct answer, 5,050. This is what Gauss did when he was 7 years old. So this is called Gauss's method. Let's see if we get the same answer if we use this formula that we discovered. So S sub 100 would be N divided by 2, so there's 100 terms, so 100 divided by 2, times the first term in the arithmetic sequence was 1. And then we want to add A sub 100, that was the last term in the sequence, 100. And you have 100 divided by 2 times 101, and that is exactly what you would get if you add it up using Gauss's method. So that is the correct answer. 5050 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 100. All right, let's try number two. This time the sequence is 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, and then ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. But they don't tell us the 100 term this time, not like the last problem. So why is this an arithmetic sequence? Well, the common difference is 4. This will come in handy this time. So the common difference is 4. You have to add 4 to get from one term to the next term. So it is an arithmetic sequence. Which means that we can use the formula for the partial sum of the first 100 terms. So we are still adding up the first 100 terms. So sum of the first 100 terms in the sequence is denoted S sub 100. It is equal to N divided by 2, so 100 divided by 2, times the first term, A sub 1, plus the 100th term in the sequence. Well, we were given the first term, it's 10, so 100 divided by 2 times 10 plus, we don't have the 100th term this time. So we have to do a little bit of scratch work. 
Keep in mind that this was an arithmetic sequence, so we have a way from the previous video of calculating any term in the sequence using the general term. So in arithmetic sequence, the general term had a formula for the nth term. It was a sub n is equal to, you start with the first term, and you add n minus 1 times the common difference, which means that if we want the 100th term, a sub 100 would be the first term, 10, plus 100 minus 1. So we have to add the common difference 99 times to get to the 100th term, and the common difference was 4. So 10 plus 99 times 4 gives us 406. That would be the 100th term in this sequence if we listed them all out up to 100 terms. So now let's go back up to the sum formula. We want to calculate the sum of the first 100 terms. It would be 100 divided by 2 times 10 plus 406. And that turns out to be 20,800. This is a much faster way than actually adding 10 plus 14 plus 18 plus 22 plus 26 plus 30 plus 34 all the way up to 406. It's much faster. Okay, let's finish up this video on an application involving the sums of an arithmetic sequence. So suppose that you are given two different job offers. Company A will start you at $33,000 a year, but they are going to guarantee you a raise every year of $2,600. So that's company A. On the other hand, company B gives you a starting salary of $40,000, but they can only guarantee you a raise of $1,000 every year. So the question is, find the total salary that each company will pay you over 10 years, 10 consecutive years, and which company pays you the greater total amount. So keep in mind that this is actually an arithmetic sequence. So company A, it's an arithmetic sequence because you are given a constant amount of raise every single year. So let's write out what we know. The starting salary for company A was $33,000. Well, that corresponds to the first term. So the first salary in the 10-year salary sequence would be 33000 And the raise each year was $2,600. Well, that's the common difference, D, 2600 So definitely an arithmetic sequence because you have a common difference. Now, we want to add the first 10 salaries, 10 consecutive years. So sum of the first 10 years of salaries. Since it's an arithmetic sequence, we can use the formula. S sub 10 is equal to n divided by 2, so 10 divided by 2, times the first term in the sequence was 33,000 plus the tenth term in the sequence. Well, we don't know that. So let's call it A sub 10 because it's the company A sequence. Now let's do a little bit of scratch work. A sub 10, this is coming from an arithmetic sequence, so there was a formula for this. The tenth term would be the first term plus n minus 1, so 10 minus 1, times the common difference, which is your raises. So 2,600. So in other words, you're given 2,600 as a raise nine consecutive years to get to your 10th year salary. And this turns out that the 10th year salary would be $56,400. That is your salary during the 10th year for company A. So now let's consider company B's offer. So company B, 
It is also an arithmetic sequence because you also have a constant raise every year. So let's figure out all the pieces. You have a starting salary. Well, you start off with $40,000 this time, which is the first term. So let's call it B sub 1 because it's company B. And the raise each year is corresponding to the common difference. And company B is giving you a thousand dollars raise every year. So the common difference this time is a thousand. So again, we're going to look at the sum of the first 10 years of salaries, but this time for company B. So capital S sub 10 is equal to same formula, N divided by two, so 10 divided by two, times the first term, which is the starting salary, 40,000, plus, this time we need to know the 10th term in the sequence for company B. So B sub 10, and again, we don't know that, so let's do a little bit of calculation. B sub 10 would be, you start with 40,000, plus, we found out earlier that you have to add nine salaries, nine raises, so 10 minus one, times the raise, which is the common difference of a thousand. So in the 10th year at company B, you'll be making $49,000. This is the salary during the 10th year. So let's figure out how much we actually made in total for each of the 10 years for both companies. So company A, S sub 10 is 10 divided by 2 times 33,000 was the starting salary plus your 10th year salary, which is 56,400. It turns out if you calculate this, your 10 year sum of all the salaries is $447,000. So that's including the races and your starting salary as well. However, on the other hand, you started out at 40,000 and you end at 49,000 for the 10 years. It turns out that this is extremely close. It is $445,000. And that is the total salaries for 10 years. So then going back up to the question, which company pays the greater total amount? It's company A by $2,000 over the entire 10 year period. So if the question was which company gives you the greater amount, it's company A. But if the question was, which company gives you the better offer? Well, that question is very subjective. If you had company A, yeah, you are given the higher raise every year. So eventually in the long term, if you stay with company A a long time, your annual salary will be a very large amount. But you start off with a very low salary, starting salary of $33,000. On the other hand, if you started with company B, you start off with a higher salary, but over a long period of time, because you only have a thousand dollar raise each year, you will not earn as much in the long term for company B as company A. So it depends on how long you're gonna stay at each company. If it's less than 10 years, you probably would want to go with company B because you're earning more at, up front. But if you're gonna stay a long time at the company, so company A would be better because you're given larger raises every year, which will give you a larger total salary. So this gives you an application of using the sum of the first in terms of an arithmetic sequence. If you have any questions about the examples we talked about in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework involving arithmetic sequences and sums, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about geometric sequences.